Gentle minds, welcome back to the shop. Today we're taking a new direction in that we are doing a long-term review. I've been trying to treat the old Bridgeport milling machine a little better now that she's getting up in age and kowtowing, of course, to the OCD types, what uh, require you to clean up after every job. We got this to clean up all the schmoo, all the chips and stuff out of the milling vise. And so it's been at it for about eight months now. So I'm quite confident that we can take it apart and give it a proper burial. I have a disability in that I have one, a whole bunch of these batteries. Two, they offer so many different variants of tools, these Milwaukee fuckers. And three, it's red. I got 70% of my optic nerve there. My, my uh, color sensing is devoted to the color red. I, uh, I'm starting the, <laughs> the three-legged race backwards. I just I can't avoid it. So we'll get this A part, see how she chooches, and then I'll tell you why it's... Well, yeah, you'll see. Now that we're in like sin, we can see there's a whole lot of wasted space in there, but for adding tracking so the NSA can ensure that our frogs are gay. Dank memes. Melt steel beams. <laughs> it has to be fairly sized so that it's... Well, I, I guess you could design that different, but this receptacle needs to be a fair size so you can actually suck some schmoo up. Off the hop, the mildly annoyed pixies start their choreographed dance over here. You see it goes through a craptacular micro switch. What's interesting here is that there's actually a micro switch. And we would see this in a crappy game or something like that. Not in a proper tool. Oh, and a fuse. Look at that. Just an automotive fuse, 30 amp automotive fuse. We can see, we glean into the mind of a, a value engineering proposition here where they are not putting the components that they would typically put in a drill or something of that nature. This is very light duty construction. The trigger mechanism itself is just relying on the detent of this micro switch. And then there is also a latch. No dead man here. <laughs> if this vacuum takes off on you, you're in trouble, partner. Now here's the control board and the control board only receives power when the trigger is actuated through this switch. So the switch is actually doing the switching for the motor on and off. And why do we have these MOSFETs and all this brain box? Okay, so we got a display to show you how much battery capacity is left. And we also got a, a little brain box here. And we got a MOSFET and then some passives and some diodes and stuff. Yeah, current shunt here to see what the voltage drop across there is. And if the voltage drop is too high, that means uh, there's too much current going through and it would very likely open this MOSFET to allow it to cool down. Now this MOSFET, there is no, well, there's no heat sink on there. However, built into the board through the vias, a whole lot of heat sinking on the back side here. And uh, according to the application notes, now this is a international rectum fryer, but uh, somebody had posted some, some application notes that on, on a package that size, you really only need 11 or so through hole vias, like these little dots, to another back plane to allow that to sink enough heat so it doesn't uh, fry up. I myself, I'm kind of old school, <laughs> more copper, more better, but there is an application note there to to allow you to do this type of thing without, well, building the, the heat sinking into the PCB. Now onto the motor and we've got some Buna and condoms to reduce yeah to reduce any kind of mechanical vibrations. Nice little Mabuchi motor. We got brass stake onto the motor, centered bronze bearing, oil light bushing, probably the same on the front. Big old impeller. Now that looks like it would do a hell of a job but it all depends on how fast this thing is chooching. Now this is probably turning at something like 2,000 ripples. However, they get it back together, you're going to see it's not that effective at actually making a vacuum. Here's the filter pleated for her pleasing. It gives us lots of surface area to collect uh, particles, small, small particles. I think this was mainly designed for construction debris, like a, a little bit of drywall dust or a, a little bit of sawdust. It just doesn't have the sucktivity that it needs in order to work on metal chips. And I'll, I'll show you that right now. Now this, 
we're going to omit this because people will cry foul that it's plugged up. So I'm uh, just going to put my uh, safety squints on because there's going to be shit flying right out of here. But you'll see it's still, even without the filter, still doesn't really pick up. I think the problem is you got to get right up on it. So I get the filter in now. But you got to get right up on it in order to suck up that, like any crevices or whatever. It just won't pull. It won't pull the way you want. You know, there's lots of crevices in here. So we'll try this now on drywall. Seeing its performance against dusty stuff, it seems to blow lots of air. Well, it's all blow and no go. It it has it flows lots of air, no doubt about it. But it doesn't seem to have enough suction. You know, it just doesn't suck good enough. So what we're going to do is we're going to spend some moolah and we'll compare this to the top of the line Dyson handheld. We'll see the difference and I'll also put a gauge on them, a vacuum gauge, to see how much they suck. No question, this thing is flowing lots of air, but for metal work, picking up chips, it just doesn't cut it. it it's not suctiony enough. Thanks for watching. Keep your dick in advice.